Hi, this is Greg Cook, your Chem 240 instructor. Let's get started with the next video. In this video, we're going to talk a little bit about resonance. And this is a topic which uh, is sometimes difficult for students to grasp because it is a, a hard to understand the concept unless you really understand structure and the shapes of molecules. So if you have difficulty understanding hybridization and the shapes, in particular, uh, pi or pi bonds when you have double and triple bonds it, resonance is going to be a little bit difficult to understand but let's talk about resonance if we take an atom like acetate ion this acetate ion has a negative charge because one of the oxygens is bonded only to one other thing and um, the formal charge on that oxygen is negative the second oxygen has a double bond to it. So this is the deprotonated form of acetic acid. Acetic acid looks like this, where we have OH. So essentially what we've done is we've deprotonated this. The two electrons in the bond remained with the oxygen. We lost a proton, and we have now a negative charge. So acetate has a formal negative charge. Now if you were to look at this and know the properties of um, double bonds, you would know that a double bond, because it's a stronger bond, is shorter than a single bond. So in this molecule, what we should observe structurally is that we should have one single bond between a carbon oxygen and one double bond between a carbon oxygen. Those should not be identical. This one should be shorter than this one. This one should be longer. Okay. In fact, what we observe when we look at the structure of acetate is that they're both equal in length. They're both identical, and both of the oxygens, if we calculate the electron density, both of the oxygens actually have about half of a negative charge. So the structure of the molecule, in reality, looks a little bit more like this. Uh, let me undo that where the bond length is actually more like a half of a bond, uh, one and a half bonds, and there's one half of a negative charge there and one half of a negative charge there. Both of the oxygens are identical, both of the bond lengths are identical, and the molecule is symmetric. How do we represent that using our Lewis structures and uh, Kekulé bonds in this case? Um, it's difficult because we're, what we're talking about here is a half of a bond, and uh, a half of a charge, and that doesn't really make sense. So we try to represent this by looking at the two extremes, keeping in mind that the two extremes don't exist. They're representing two extremes of what actually exists in the middle. Okay? The structure is actually somewhere in the middle, but hard to represent using our electron counting and bond uh, the way we draw things. Let me erase all this off the screen and uh, talk about this a little more. When we delocalize the charge, that is, this negative charge is not localized just on one oxygen. It's spread out between two oxygens. That can only occur through p orbitals or pi bonds and lone pairs. So if we think about uh, the two electrons on the oxygen and just imagine them moving and coming down and forming a double bond between this oxygen. That would lead to this double bond over here. At the same time, the double bond, the pi bond on the other oxygen carbon bond breaks and those electrons move up and so that gives rise to this oxygen with three lone pairs and the negative charge. So in order to do that, the lone pair has to be adjacent to a carbon with a p orbital or a pi bond. And that's what, in fact, we have here. This negative charge is in conjugation with that double bond. We can go back to the other structure if we just do the opposite. Take a lone pair down and push the bond uh, electrons back up onto the oxygen. Now we can do this exercise. Again, that's not happening. The actual structure has all of those of the that, that pair of electrons is actually spread out between both oxygens. Okay? But it's hard to represent that and account for all of the electrons. This is why we use uh, resonance structures to represent the two extremes of what actually exists in between. So what, what the actual molecule is is some kind of combination of the addition of this structure and this structure. Well, delocalization of charges is a stabilizing effect and it helps to uh, greatly stabilize charges on molecules. 
Um, that affects things like reactivity and in particular acidity. We're going to talk about acids and bases in the next chapter, but let's just give a little preview here. If we take these two molecules, in the case on the top we have the molecule ethanol where we have an alcohol functional group and we have an OH bond. Uh, compare that molecule with the one below, acetic acid. Notice the difference is just the presence of that well, CO The numbers bond. here represent the pKa value, that is uh, the strength of how easy it is for this proton to come off. So if this reacts with a base, and I'll just generically draw a base here. If that reacts with the base, the base can grab the proton and the electrons will remain with the oxygen. So the re result of this is that we have I'm going to draw all the electrons on here now. An oxygen with a minus charge plus whatever the base was with the hydrogen and that will be maybe a plus charge if you will. Uh, no, I guess it started out negative so we'll just do it without. The base, the base now is neutralized with that proton. Okay, compare that to uh, the case where we take the same base and take the proton off of acetic acid. The result is an acetate ion with a negative charge on the oxygen plus the conjugate acid, uh, I'll say BH. Well, an acid-base reaction is an equilibrium and the pKa is reflective of this equilibrium. The higher the number, the weaker the acid it is. So the lower the number, the stronger acid. So if it's a stronger acid, it can more easily give up the proton to the base. So why is it easier for acetic acid to give up the proton than um, ethanol to give up its proton? Well, it has to do with the stability of the resulting negatively charged species that's generated. In the top case, this negative charge is localized on one oxygen. There's no place for it to move because there's no possibility of resonance forms. Whereas in the bottom case, as we just discussed, acetate uh, can actually uh, have two different resonance forms. The hybrid structure is something in between uh, and that negative charge is spread out. That stabilizes it. So this is more stable than the anion on top. This one is less stable. Thus the resonance of the acetate ion produced has an effect on the equilibrium. So that's how the resonance uh, and the ability for delocalization or spreading out of charge can affect reactivity. Let's take a look at the phenoxide ion. This is a, a benzene ring with an OH group on it. Um, and you might think that that might be similar to ethanol. But in fact, uh, phenol is much more acidic than ethanol. And if I react it with a base like sodium hydroxide, I've shown OH minus here, if that takes off the proton, leaving the electrons on the oxygen, we would then generate a phenoxide anion. I'm not drawing the other part, which the byproduct of this would be water. Uh, but the phenoxide anion, that's easy to do because that negative charge, that lone pair, is now adjacent to a double bond. So we can draw resonance forms. Imagine taking that lone pair and forming a double bond here, at the same time breaking the pi bond and putting the electrons on the adjacent carbon. That would result in the formation of an oxygen double bond. Uh, and then a negative charge in the adjacent position where those electrons were moved up and the other two bonds are there. That's a resonance form for the phenoxide ion. The negative charge is spread out not in this case between two oxygens but between an oxygen and a carbon. And in fact you can continue drawing more resonance forms where you bring that double that lone pair down to form a carbon-carbon double bond and break that one and put the electrons up on that carbon. So the resulting structure would look like this. Okay, You can move that again. You can move that down here and then break this bond and put those electrons on that carbon and that would give a structure, sorry for my poor drawing, which looks like this. So that negative charge is actually spread out between four different atoms. The oxygen and three of the carbons in the ring. Uh, this can be completed if you 
push this down and push those up on there, then we go back to the original phenoxide ion that we generated. So this is a greatly stabilized anion because it's delocalized and we can draw four different resonance forms for it, representing something in between where there's a partial negative charge on the oxygen, partial negative charge on that carbon, partial negative charge on that carbon, and partial negative charge on that carbon. Let me provide you with a few other examples of resonance forms. We can draw resonance forms simply of uh, simple uh, alkenes, for example. So if you have a carbon-carbon double bond, let's just take two adjacent carbon-carbon bonds in this molecule. I'll just draw it like this. Uh, in principle, we can show resonance forms. So if you take two adjacent double bonds, break one of them, move those electrons there and put the double bond in between and break that. What happens when it, we are to do that? Let's draw this out. I'm just going to draw the carbons for clarity. I'm leaving the hydrogens off. So we left um, this carbon empty, so that actually ends up with a formal plus charge. We have a double bond between those two carbons and the electrons on the end went to the end carbon and so now that has a formal negative charge. Now I wouldn't say this resonance form contributes greatly to the structure, overall structure, but you can certainly draw valid resonance forms from this. We have only moved around pi bonds and lone pairs and holes, or what we call empty orbitals. That's the only thing we've moved or changed in this. If you think about um, other types of molecules that have p orbitals on them, a carbon with a plus charge is an empty p orbital. And if you put that plus charge next to a double bond, so if we think about this particular uh, double bond, you can take the two electrons that are in one of that double bond, move them over to satisfy that plus charge, and draw a new carbon plus on that end where the electrons left, and a new double bond there. So what actually exists is um, something that's more like this, where you have the two ends of the carbons have plus charge on them. So that plus charge is spread out between both ends of this system. And then if you look at uh, orbitals on this, it actually looks a little bit more like this, where the plus charge is spread out throughout three p orbitals two from the carbons of the double bond and one from the low empty orbital that's on the carbon. Okay, we'll be talking a lot more about resonance forms and how charges and electrons can be delocalized and spread out as we go to future chapters and talk about reactivity. Hopefully this provides you with a basis for the idea of what resonance is.